Hello and welcome to Roofers Coffee Shop RLW. My name is Heidi Ellsworth and today we are here to talk about workforce development. You know, we always talk about the labor shortage, but this is actually solutions to the labor shortage that um, has been generating for a long time and is making a huge difference. We have an esteemed panel today. I am so excited to have everyone share their information, really help you as contractors and roofing companies to get involved and to get involved with your local vocational schools. So have your pen and paper out because there's going to be a lot of tips and tricks coming out of this um, RLW today. To start out with some housekeeping, first of all, I want to thank our sponsor, John Smanville. Thank you so much for today um, and for everything that John Smanville is doing for um, workforce development, CTE, Skills USA. You're going to hear all about it today. Also, this is being recorded and it will be available on demand within the next 24 hours. So be sure to share it out there and get it out to um, not only your company, but other companies out there to really spread the word. And the chat is open. So please introduce yourself. Let us know where you're from. What's the name of your company? I would like to um, introduce our panel, everyone who has been so involved with workforce development. So first of all, Sherry Miles, welcome back. Thank you so much for being here. And if you could introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about your company. Yeah, great. Thanks, Heidi, for having me. I'm Sherry Miles. I'm a fourth generation roofing contractor in Virginia. Uh, proud to say that Virginia held the first in the nation Skills USA competition for commercial roofing uh, three years ago. And we've had participants ever since and have sent two um, in the past two years um, to nationals. So super excited to be here. Can't wait to hear all about um, other successes. Awesome. That is great. Thank you. And you are, I, I always appreciate you being here, Sherry. Thank you with everything that you do. And I am really excited to introduce Rick D'Amato. Rick, thank you for being here today. This is a real honor. Um, if you could introduce yourself and tell us about what you're doing. Well, hi, Heidi. Thanks for inviting me here. Uh, D'Amato Enterprises is uh, just me. I, at this point in my life, uh, I, I still do a little consulting. I do a very little writing, uh, but I'm retired from uh, 50 years in service to roofing contractors in a, in a lot of different roles. So uh, uh, my in retirement volunteer work is uh, trying to help push the pile forward where workforce development is concerned. And uh, the one we're talking about today is one of the one of the key levers, I believe, that we can pull as an industry to to help turn turn this around uh, and raise the level of professionalism in the industry. So I'm just really glad to be here. Thank yeah. you. It's been so fun working together on this, Rick. Thank you for everything you do and bringing, bringing us all in. Um, next, I'd like to introduce Tim Stevens. Again, Tim, thank you so much for being here. If you could introduce yourself and tell us about your company. Yeah, thanks, Heidi. Uh, yeah, Tim Stevens with Architecture Sheet Metal in Orlando, Florida, and um, excited to talk about uh, what we've been doing for the last couple of years building this because it's a really great program. A lot of opportunity there for contractors. That's great. Thank you for all you do, and you, everyone's going to hear a lot more about how it all started. Um, and last but definitely not least is John Espenshade with NRCA. John, welcome back. Please introduce yourself and tell us about what you do. Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, my name is John Espenshade, and I serve as NRCA's Director of Workforce Development. And um, really, uh, I just do all the stuff that uh, the rest of these folks have been thinking about doing for a long time, um, except, you know, that's what I do day in and day out. So uh, always happy to be here. And thanks for having me. Love it. It's so great. I want to um, finally, and it wasn't last but at least, but I also want to introduce Jamie. Jamie um, with Johnson Manville, thank you so much for being here. Can you introduce yourself and tell us about what you do with Johnson Manville? Hi, yeah. Bit. So uh, Jamie Treglio, I've been in the roofing industry for a few years, but I'm with Johns Manville and we've been involved just with the NRCA and working with this team towards Skills USA. It's something I'm passionate about. I have, you know, kids that are this age. And so I think it's a great way to introduce this whole industry to new and upcoming kids and people looking to create these great careers. 
That is so great. Thank you so much. And so we are going to be going through exactly how you all can get involved with your vocational schools, but we're going to start with some history and where we're at today. I do want to remind everybody the chat is open and I'm seeing you, everyone coming across the country, um, in, putting their name and their company in. Thank you so much. It's so exciting to have you all here. Um, any questions you have, any comments or um, anything, just go ahead and put them in the chat and we'll be taking those throughout the um, RLW. So let's start with... Um, where we are, what is currently happening happening with the NRCA workforce. So John, can you start us out and kind of give us an overview? Uh, sure, but uh, as you know, from mid-year meetings, this takes about an hour for me to talk through all the way just <laughs> on its own. So I'm gonna try to give a little bit of condensed version. Uh, so um, these are kind of the uh, four primary tenets of workforce development initiatives uh, that NRCA are currently launching. Uh, kind of the uh, the crown jewel, if you will, is Skills USA, which by this point uh, most people have heard about. Uh, Skills USA is an organization designed to uh, train high school and uh, tech college students to become leaders in their field upon graduation, whether or not that be uh, a craft or the construction industry, like an electrician or a carpenter or a roofer. Uh, but if they're interested in becoming an EMT, if they want to be a cosmetologist or a barber or um, there's a whole bevy of contests out there under the Skills USA umbrella, and now that there is a commercial roofing one. Um, the Association for Career and Technical Education is a much broader lane of individuals working in that same career and technical education space, where Skills USA is maybe 5,000 uh, teachers across the country. Uh, the Association for Career and Technical Education is 25,000 teachers. So it is a much broader net, um, but, you know, we figured that Skills USA is a nice starting lane, but eventually we want to broaden out into a full ACTE space. Uh, for corrections, um, correctional education and roofing um, has a little bit more of a history than we did in the other spaces. You know, um, this is a place that roofers have gone to try to recruit people to go into their labor force. And so, what NRCA is trying to do is get some of the standardized training programs that we have developed, namely the track course, into some of these facilities. So while people are trying to advance their education and prepare uh, for you know, uh, life post rehabilitation, that that's an option that they can pursue for a good career choice. And then lastly, our homeschools. Um, homeschool kids, you know, for one, there is a, a tremendous amount of variance and individuality that can go into preparing the student's curriculum if they are homeschooled. They also tend to be very tight-knit with their communities, with church groups and things like that, and they tend to have a natural gravitation towards construction. So much in the same way where we're just trying to put these trainings into these places that might yield some benefit for the industry in the future, these are kind of the four primary lanes. And you have a full, just so everyone knows, there is a full committee who works on this through the NRCA meeting twice a year in person and then also many meetings um, virtually. Maybe just tell just a little bit about that, John. Certainly. So um, as a matter of fact, except for uh, Jamie, I think everyone on this call is on the CTE and Workforce Development Committee. Uh, and um, and everyone, including Jamie, has done a, a lot of things with that group in terms of empowering these initiatives. And what that group does is we get together and we kind of brainstorm. You know, it's a really interesting little think tank about what can be done, what is being done, what's working, what needs to be improved upon in order to address the workforce shortages in this industry. And I'm not saying that just saying this because, you know, I'm on this webinar with y'all. Um, but y'all are a lot of fun to work with. You know, there I've worked with groups of people that make it terrible and you guys usually make it fun, but um, you know, you guys don't let me slack off either. It always means more work. Yeah, I can say that. So let's kind of go back to a little bit of history on this. And Rick, I would love to start with you on just um, you know, really kind of focusing in on skills USA, but what is it in, in the history kind of, how did you bring you and I know Tim and a number of people brought and obviously Sherry with the first one, you all brought this to the um, NRCA. Can you talk about that and to the Roofing Alliance? Happy to, Heidi, thanks. Um, <clears throat> skills USA, I'll give you the very Breeders Digest version of, of a few things that have impressed me about skills USA and some of their history, but uh, Skills USA actually started 
1965. They weren't known as Skills USA then at that point in time. They were the Vocational Industrial Clubs of America. Uh, they were a student-based organization, which they still are today. But VICA, V-I-C-A, as they were known and continued to be known right up to 2004, uh, held uh, skills competitions and, and worked through uh, construction and other skilled trades classrooms. And they really build students and they help build students, not just based on um, the academics, all that's very much a part of it, but also the hands-on training, knowledge, skill knowledge, and soft skills like uh, how to talk to people, how to behave uh, in, in, a, in a work situation. It's a very well-rounded program. So in 1965, they got started. In 1967, they held their first competition featuring 54 competitors in five competitions. Uh, for those of us who just got finished with our Skills USA National Championship, where we had 10 or 20,000 people and, and uh, literally 130 different competitions from every state uh, and a few territories, uh, th that's, that's a, a big leap. Close to 60 years, so it, it did take a minute. But, in, but by 1976, they had 250,000 members uh, and more than 10,000 chapters across the country. In 1995, they started calling their annual event the, Net, the Skills USA Championships. That's what VICA, as it was still known, uh, started calling the uh, Competition Skills USA uh, National Championships. Uh, it wasn't until 2004 that they changed the name of the entire organization to Skills USA, which is what it's known as today. In 2017, their membership surpassed 400,000 mark for the first time in its history. So it's a very large, robust uh, nationwide program. Uh, and it, it's, it, they provide a vital solution to the ongoing skills gap. That's what Skills USA is all about where more highly skilled jobs are available than, than there are professionals to, to handle them. And they've been doing this since 1965. And let's say that again. Uh, their vision is to produce the most highly skilled workforce in the world, providing every member the opportunity for career success. That is exactly the lane we're in in roofing. Yeah. We have a great career path. I don't care what part of the industry you're you're working in or where you start from. Uh, there's there's a great career path here, and that's what we're telling the world. And our engagement with the broader career and technical education community allows us the opportunity to tell our story and let everyone know about roofing. Um, and you wanted to know how I happened to veer into this. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Well, uh, I retired from uh, a career in wholesale roofing oriented distribution at the end of 2016 and I decided before that uh, that it, in my retirement what I had hoped to do was uh, do a lot of volunteer work with our trade associations the National Roofing Contractors Association and the Roofing Alliance which is the foundation uh, of NRCA and the roofing industry and um, I decided that workforce development was the, was the, the number one problem in the industry has been for a while still is and that's what I would like to work on. So in March of 2017, right after I retired, I, I, I went to the uh, uh, Career and Educational Foundation of Georgia annual uh, skills competition that they have in Georgia. And there's some roofing contractors there that were showing roofing as a trade. And there was no competition for roofing. There was no formal engagement with, with career and technical education. They were just looking for skilled people coming out of trade schools and construction schools. And I was intrigued and that's where I learned about Skills USA. A few months after that, I went to my first uh, national event in Louisville, Kentucky in 2017, in June, I believe it was. And uh, long story short, I was just blown away. Uh, huge event, uh, hundreds and hundreds of skills on display, um, thousands and thousands of students competing and uh, I was just really impressed with what I saw so that's when I started to learn about skills USA and I saw welding mining manufacturing CNC machines culinary arts beauticians 
anything you do with your hands, I saw it all. No roofing. Zero roofing. Yeah. And that troubled me uh, a lot because here's this organization been in, in around since 1965. NRCA has been around since 1886. How did we, how did we miss each other? So anyway, I started digging in and after a couple of years of crying and whining and telling the leaders in the industry, this is something we really need to become engaged in. Sure enough, I was able to uh, encourage the leaders of the Roofing Alliance to uh, step up and they put the Kickstarter fund in for the industry to join Skills USA as an industry partner. Uh, and that means you're helping them fund what they do. Yeah. Uh, and you are becoming a partner with them. And that partnership, John, can talk a lot more about it than I can, uh, because as an industry partner, we get a lot of value when we show up at these events and are able to develop courses and do the things that we do. But uh, it got started then. And, uh, you know, three years ago, we had a demonstration uh, competition. Two years ago, we had our first uh, national skills competition with four competitors. And this year, of course, as you all know, we had, uh, gosh, we had 11 competitors uh, in, in high school and post-secondary. Uh, it was an amazing event and it continues to grow and expand. Uh, and uh, it's it's uh, really, really been something to see it grow. And I'm more than pleased that uh, this group of folks on this call is all about making that happen. It's so good. Well, I, and so Tim, kind of to dive in where um, Rick was, how did you get involved with Skills USA and when did it start? So I lived in Georgia at the time and was involved with the association there. I was in the, on the exec committee. I don't know quite where I was at on the chairs, but, um, and Rick is from Atlanta, Georgia or in Georgia. And so he reached out and was asking uh, why we weren't involved with this. And I, I didn't really know anything about it at the time. Uh, we had a contractor out there, Roof Depot, Ron Heath with Roof Depot, um, met up with me and showed me what he was doing. And he was the one that set up and showed up at that SEFCA event, which is the state competition for Skills USA, but then they have a whole trade demonstration thing. And so he, he created a space called the World of Roofing there and had organized all this. And so I um, had tried to get the association to jump on board um, to say, hey, yeah, this is something we need to get involved with. And like Rick said, there was no, you know, obviously we didn't have a competition, no idea how to even get a competition in place. But, um, you know, we when you show up to these events and you see all these kids and we set up hands-on demonstrations and we had hundreds of kids coming through well in PPO at the state thing in Georgia, it became something that it's like, okay, this is a no-brainer. We need to get involved. And somehow we need to get these kids involved. And then Rick, uh, definitely took that up to the national level and and, uh, and blew it up. And we had a COVID year that kind of interrupted. COVID kind of interrupted a lot of the progress for a little bit there, but um, we came out of that. It came out of it hot because um, the NRCA jumped on it and um, Sherry jumped on it right away in her state. And then, you know, they were smart enough to bring in John knowing, hey, we need somebody full time from the NRCA to, to push this effort and, it, and it's grown from there. It's been, it's been really great to watch it expand. Wow. And Sherry, just a little bit of your history with Skills USA. Yeah. Um, I, can't, I can't remember what year I went to our um, state competition, which was held in Virginia beach, which is my hometown. And um, I showed up and had a table and had samples and asked if I could go inside and watch the competition happening. Um, there was no roofing there. And they're like, yeah, no, you can't go in. Um, you're really kind of late to the game here. Uh, you need to be a part of this starting um, the day after this competition ends. Wow. You need to be, yeah, um, networking with the teachers, with the um admins with whoever you need to get into to get into the school separately so uh, that was kind of a wake-up call but it was also really interesting sitting at that table not being allowed to go inside 
watching the parents, watching them pace back and forth because their kids were inside competing. And it was, you know, high stakes for them. It was really cool. And I had a lot of conversations with parents as they walked by the table and kind of touched and felt. And they're like, why aren't you, you know, part of this? And like, yeah, that's a great question. Next year, next year we will be. Um, so really started making relationships. And I'm gonna talk about that a lot, making relationships with the people at the, at the school level and getting into schools so that we could start um, uh, developing a curriculum. We were, we were developing a curriculum and trying to get in at the same time, um, kind of building a plane as it's taking off, but uh, we've learned a lot. And I think we've got a nice um, uh, way of success now that uh, you know, we start in the fall and we get in with the with the um, this in this case carpentry classes. It just makes sense. Um, there was no room for roofing anywhere in the building that we were in, so we gave them the schematics for the the um, the mock-ups. They were able to build those first in carpentry, and then we were able to come in for roofing. So yeah, it's it's been a process. Like Rick <laughs> Rick said, we've been kind of circling circling around Skills USA for a while and finally um, was able to get in and, and start going. That is so cool. Well, and you know, while you're on that, Sherry, maybe take us just a little bit on what you, you what your path has been starting, you know, with your state and then getting to the state competition. Maybe just talk a little bit about that. Yeah. And, you know, I, I will preach this from the, from the highest mountaintop. You have to get have relationships with the schools, with your CTE boards. So I actually got and sat on, I sit on still uh, Virginia Beach Public Schools CTE advisory board. And so I'm in there every other month um, <laughs> hearing what else uh, other trades are doing, not just construction, but everything else involved in CTE. And, you know, having a seat at the table is super important. I'm also able to hear where some funding sources are or where some opportunities may be for um, other um, endeavors into roofing. But so through that was able to meet the carpentry teacher, develop a relationship with him um, and say, hey, you know, he went through track. Um, and then we brought in hands-on guys, my pro-certified thermoplastic roofers. I have two of them that go in and teach on rainy days and get the kids ready. And we kind of do like, um, in the fall, we do a more of a demo for all of the construction uh, cluster. So the people in plumbing, HVAC, carpentry, masonry, they all electrical, they all come in and they try roofing. Um, and then we kind of figure out who wants to be part of the competition and then we really focus on them um, starting probably in early January when they're back in school and uh, doing hands-on and then they go through the track process as well. Wow, um, because that is, I mean, to get your, um, to start with getting young people interested even in roofing. So Tim, you know, talk a little bit about your path at how you've, and I know we're gonna talk about this ongoing, but how you have taken your young people up and through the competitions. Yeah. So, I mean, it started in Georgia, carried over in Florida. Um, there's some really great resources that, to find out the schools that have these programs uh, and you can find out which schools have participated in skills USA. And that was kind of the ones we targeted because we knew that they already knew uh, about the, the competitions and stuff. And then it's reaching out to a school that's close to you. And, um, uh, I was doing it in Georgia, moved to Florida, uh, so I started here in Florida once the, the, the competition was in place, and I just go in for a day. I go meet with the teachers, and I talk to them, and they are so hungry for industry to get involved. They're asking for you to show up uh, and for participation, so they gave me a whole day to meet with all of their classes, so, um, you know, it would be 300 students, and I just would do a, a PowerPoint. And talked about careers in roofing um, and some of the things we use, utilize TRAC, which is, if you don't know what TRAC is, that's NRCA's uh, curriculum for kind of beginning roofers. Um, and it's, it, it's got a bunch of great little things in there. And I showed demonstrations of that. And then the best thing, but the very best thing to do is just take a, a, a heat welder, some PPO and some T-patches and set it up and let those kids try to weld a T-patch. 
yeah. and um, they love it. They eat it up. And so, yeah, it, 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 you show them this and then, uh, you know, you get the opportunity of, hey, we have a competition that you could participate in. And me as a contractor will help coach you through this to get you to compete at a state level. And if you win at your state level to a national level where you could be a state champion. And from the very beginning, this is what we talked about the usefulness of this. Imagine if you could go to a school and take a kid and get them to be a state champion and then a national champion. You tell me that that kid's not going to want to come work for you. <laughs> you know, and it, 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 it's proof because we're going through that process now. And these kids, they, they do want to come back and work. And now the teachers are hungry and there's more students that want to participate. So it just grows from there. But the key is finding the schools close to you. And John has resources to help with that. Um, and there's different programs. There's different ways to get those, to find those schools. Um, and then it's just reaching out to them. But the teachers are very receptive. It's like going through that. So John, we're talking about the national. We just had the nationals with the winners. So I question I should have asked before is roofing international yet so uh actually for the first year this year uh, one of my colleagues John Goodman is uh taking a team of U.S. roofers to compete and I believe it's the International Federation of Dock and Deckers mm -hmm. um in uh Switzerland um or Austria I don't know it's some place that sounds like it's great to go to that's slightly nicer than Atlanta um <laughs> But um, for the first time, yeah, the U.S. is going to have a contingent going there. And eventually we're hoping that all this stuff that we're talking about, whether it be, you know, the programs, the alliance of putting together at you know Clemson and Arizona State, you know, will connect eventually with some of the stuff that we're doing with Skills USA and career and technical education schools. Now, if you are interested in finding a Skills USA school near you, um, because it seems like a daunting task, uh, in the chat, I am dropping a link to a search function where you can search by state. It'll give you the list of all the schools in your state that have Skills USA programs, but also building science and construction programs. And if you click on one of the names of those schools, you'll get the advisor contact at that school for that. So you can just go directly and talk to the first person. We understand that, um, you know, in order to get a student eventually into an international competition, it starts with talking to someone that's in your backyard. Yeah. So, okay. They get involved, they get in the schools, they kind of understand you state, regional, sometimes um, national, maybe someday international. Um, but let's talk a little bit about being there. So John, maybe you can just give us an overview of what what the roofing industry is involved in and um, some of the results from this year's, along with some of the other things like we talked about with national craft championships. Sure. So uh, the roofing industry now uh, has several different areas of participation in the Skills USA, um, you know, kind of umbrella, uh, not only at the regional and state level, but the national contest itself. Uh, roofing has three different areas in where we're represented. We have the Teamworks contest, uh, which teams of five from all over the country are tasked with cold reading a plan set and creating a structure that includes carpentry, electrical, masonry, plumbing, and now, of course, a roofing component. And the roof is really a part that separates the winners from the losers. You know, it has to be well-planned, well-done, well-executed, because we do not grade easily on that. Um, right uh, next to that is the Texpo area, uh, the roofing pavilion, if you will, which is kind of our trade show presence at the Skills USA contest. And this year, we had a scaffolding build and, uh, you know, the folks over at JM were kind enough to actually put a layer of single ply on top of that scaffolding so people could walk up there and get the experience of walking on a commercial roof, which I can tell you that two years ago, no one in the Skills USA universe had even considered that roofs were not always sloped <laughs> or not, that not always steep sloped, at least. Um, but not only could people walk up there and get the experience of walking on a commercial roof, they could then learn how to do some of it from the people at JM who were going to teach kids how to weld a seam. And those were some of the hardest working folk all week at the Skills USA National Contest because they were burning through rolls of single ply just as people one after another came through, including uh, Todd Pennington uh, from um, what's the name of the show that he was on again? HGTV. HGTV, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Uh, he's a, he's not one of the shows that song when I'm on the stationary bike in the morning, but uh, <laughs> for the people that knew who he was, they thought it was a really big deal. And 
And then, of course, you have the commercial roofing competition itself, which is, you know, the 11 mock-ups brought across the Georgia World Congress Center, people from all over the country. And, you know, it's something about having that tension in the air, you know, like you can feel that those kids are like they're into it, they're focused, it's been building up to that. Um, for uh, for the results, you know, uh, it was really close to the top in the secondary, you know, where we had eight competitors. Um, the kid who competed last year, who was not happy with how he placed, came back after a year of training and just narrowly edged out, um, you know, a competition from Florida for, for uh, first and second place in the secondary division. And then uh, the winner on the post-secondary side, a uh, kid named Tyler, who was by and large mostly self-taught. Like he, he spent time on YouTube videos. He connected with a contractor who was going to help him get some material with a, you know, local, with a local distributor. And then he really, you know, took up the torch and ran of it on his own. The National Craft Championship is something that's for the apprentices of, uh, of the world. We have, um, we have 17 ABC chapters that are currently using the National Center for Construction Education and Research's roofing program, NCCER's roofing, in order to, you know, have a formal apprenticeship, a two-year apprenticeship program that's available in 17 different chapters. And this year, we had our first demo contest for the National Craft Championships as well. So it's been a busy year with all this stuff and getting into this competitive space. But um, this has a seeding effect that's really easy to see. And it's been a lot of fun to watch. Yeah. I mean, you can just see it. It just keeps growing and growing. And it really takes the whole industry of everybody who's involved, not just with the NRCA. And I think everybody saw this at the beginning. This is for everyone. So you don't have to be an NRCA member. You don't, this is, this is for everyone in the roofing um, industry. Of course, we always say you should be an NRCA member, but um, there is, it really is open to all. So I want to start with Jamie, because one of the things that Rick and I were on, um, put onto a subcommittee was to get sponsors. And I have to tell you, maybe when we first started talking about it, Rick and I were like, there was a little bit of hesitancy, but I can tell you where there was no hesitancy. And that was with John's Manville. Um, now today, everybody's knocking on the door because it's so cool. But Jamie, why, why has John's Manville, you know, how important is this as a sponsor and just as an industry um, to get involved and to be a part of that? You know, I think as as a sponsor, we're here, you know, we recognize with our contractors because we're a manufacturer, right? So we we hear their struggles, we hear and get to see it every day, people not have not having enough qualified work. There's not enough industry knowledge coming into an industry that is aging like everything else. And so from our standpoint, it was a really exciting time to just be part of an industry, not have necessarily this agenda behind us, but just participate in attracting qualified, interested, exciting, and excited um, people into it. I think going to some of these events and participating is like a highlight of my year in the fact that it's a very rare environment that you're in where everyone there is excited. They're <laughs> excited if they're seeing something new for the first time. So we had so many people come through and want to try that, you know, had never even thought about roofing before. You know, they, they're just not thinking about it. They're, they're young, they're, you know, they're here maybe for something else, but didn't think they could do it suddenly they're up there, they're learning about it. And this is a really cool thing. It could be a path forward for them for their whole life. And how do you not get excited about that on a personal level as yeah. well as a, a corporate level? Especially so, when you see the parents there. Yeah, absolutely. The parents are excited. Their children's are taking initiative to you know move forward their life. We're excited that they're considering an industry that we're all so passionate about. And I think just by the end of those, few days, you are, you just have so much optimism for this roofing industry. You really do. Yeah. It's so amazing. Lorna, thank you. She's saying changes in demographic and immigration laws are sign significantly impacting our workforce. The exodus of non-U.S. born workers due to these regulations has created a pressing issue for our industry's workforce. And so everybody's in Lorna, who's with Tremco, Tremco has been involved on um, 
many times. And Joe did want to say that it is in Austria, the um, International Federation. Um, and then, um, and that we're thing. Okay. And Chris is like, it's okay. I didn't have my hand up. We're all good. Um, so Rick, I wanted to kind of talk about, um, the roofing Alliance. So you, you had the first proposal into the roofing Alliance back in 2017. And then you and I, and a bunch of other people went to the roofing Alliance this last year to get them involved again. Why don't you share a little bit about that? Well, the, the issue is this, uh, this initiative, as you just mentioned, is for the entire roofing industry. Uh, and it is being driven by the National Roofing Contractors Association. John works for the NRCA and they're, they're really the, the, the horsepower behind keeping us going forward. But it's, it's an initiative for the entire roofing industry. And at the Roofing Alliance, we have four pillars that we work on. And I'm going to get these wrong. Education is one. Uh, technology, philanthropy, and sustainability. I, I believe those are the four pillars that our foundation rests on. But education is, is, is such a big deal. Uh, and, we, and the Roofing Alliance has been supporting uh, for a dozen or so years, uh, a, a very important initiative with uh, with the uh, construction schools at four year universities, and uh, with Dr. Uh, Deval Gajar of Clemson, we've developed programs. Uh, we're we're on the way to having roofing as a minor at the college level. Uh, I I can't even get into the to that whole side of it but they're starting to sort of push together because the Alliance is now funding an effort to start a roofing center uh, within uh, Clemson, uh, a four-year university that will address uh, skilled workers in our industry, not just the uh, construction management side. So all of these things are coming together, but the Alliance having always been a, 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 a or having, as I said, for a dozen or so years, as, as one of its key components, uh, a, a, a competition, an annual competition between construction schools uh, where, they, where they have groups of students that, that are required to uh, put together a package of estimates uh, and present it at our, at our uh, International Roofing Expo, our annual uh, meeting. And it just occurred to me, it has been occurring to me that, you know what, the Alliance needs to address education on every front when it comes to the industry. And that includes, and that includes the trade workers uh, who uh, obviously, who are we if we can't put on a roof? Um, uh, we love our manufacturers. They do great things, but even they recognize that if they don't have good, competent installers uh, putting on those roofs that they warrant, um, that's kind of a problem. And uh, the, the issue of our most highly skilled and talented roofers are the ones that are aging out. Uh, and we, we need to do a better job of replacing their professionalism. Um, and, and you don't just do that just by bringing people on a crew. Uh, so it's really important, in my view, that we pull this lever, as I call it, uh, you know, to make sure we're in the construction education space. And the Roofing Alliance, in their wisdom, uh, uh, with some encouragement, uh, they have uh, decided, you know what, that's a good idea. We're going to support uh, career and technical education efforts through this uh, Skills USA initiative. And for, for three years running, they have uh, put forward a significant uh, contribution to these efforts. And this is on top of what the NRCA is doing. Uh, it's on top of what all of our sponsors are doing, our wonderful sponsors like JM are, are doing to help us support this work. And the reason we needed to go to them and, and ask for that is because we're 65, 60, almost 60 years behind. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, and to what happened to Sherry uh, and her local community where she wasn't allowed into the, into the room, so to speak, that's because the people that were in the room had invested 
their time, energy, and efforts with those students before that competition. And we're in competition with them for those <laughs> students to come to yes. work for us. Okay. And, and, and I'm going to throw one more thing in when it comes to the students that uh, are engaged with Skills USA. And I hope John would back me up on this. They're leaders in their schools, they're talkers. It's not just those students that we're addressing. When you bring a student into one of our courses, he's telling his friends about it. She's letting everybody know what she's up to. It, 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 it has a good spreading, spreading out effect. So uh, I hope I answered your question. Yeah, you did. It, it, it's going viral. It's so exciting um, to watch that. So one of the things and that was perfect. And I just want to kind of emphasize how important it is to all of these people to be involved, the contractors being in the schools, the contractors being able to reach out to sponsors, both locally on the state level, um, to sponsors to get the materials, to get the help. And with the roofing alliance behind it. And then all the associations out there, like we were talking about Georgia, Arizona, we have so many associations, Western states that are very involved in Skills USA. Um, so I want to, I'm gonna actually go back to this because I think this is really important that we give some um, takeaways to everyone who's on this call on how they can get involved. So Sherry, I'm going to start with you. Um, just on lessons learned, like to for people, how they what they need to be thinking about as they get involved. Right, uh, persistence is number one. You just have to stay on top of, the, uh, of on top of the teachers who are pulled in a million directions. But you know, email, texting, showing up, uh, doing what you say you're going to do. Um, uh, connecting uh, the, the teachers in the classrooms with uh, distribution and manufacturers and showing them a little bit more of the industry of, than, you know, rather than just um, installation of, of uh, thermoplastics in this case, sponsoring the kids. Um, we did some really cool things where we gave them a starter kit for participating. So they were ready to go to work for a roofing company, even if it wasn't mine, um, upon successful completion of the Skills USA um, training. And, um, you know, you just you just have to stay involved. You ha it's, you know, I, I'm a person that doesn't take no for an answer very often. Um, so be that kind of person, be that just constantly, um, always trying to get um, connecting other contractors to, uh, schools in their area on a lot of Zooms, but you just have to keep going. You know, a lot of the teachers in the in the CTE world, especially in carpentry or construction, have retired from their career, and they're not apt to change what they've what they are doing. So, if you can make their life easier in any any way, um, if you can make their job easier, they are very grateful for that. Um, if they don't have to learn a whole lot, <laughs> um, it, it's that it, it is a struggle. But when you also p pair that with getting in the ear of the admin, whether it be a principal or the person in charge of CTE for that area, they're going to put pressure on that teacher also to make sure that it, um, things happen. Uh, but, and also find schools, you know, not every CTE um, necessarily has a Skills USA. A person that helps them, but most most of them do also finds that person. They're not typically teaching; they're typically doing the admin work. So it's really important to know who that is um, because they're going to be the ones that are doing the um, registering the kids and making sure they have their stuff and and all those things for a, for the state and then the national competition. So it's it's relationships again, getting in there um, and and not taking no for an answer. So, and Tim, I know when we were at Skills USA, you were sharing stories about travel time, practice, going, spending time, four hours, sometimes five hours at a time, training and teaching. Talk a little bit about what, because I mean, yes, the schools want you. Yes, this is important for your companies, but there is, you need to be aware that um, to do it successfully, there's some ways that you need to do it. Yeah, and so it's different. So I in Florida, I dealt with a trade school and a high school. Um, and so the trade school, I'm in Orlando, the trade school was in Tampa. So it was an hour and a half drive to get down there. And so starting at the beginning of the year, I was going down, going to each school once a week. 
to show up and help these kids. Now, the, you're, you're dealing with two different entities when you deal with high schools and trade schools. Trade schools have a lot more funding. Skills USA is almost marketing for them. So they can show like the trophies and how many winners they have that attracts people to come into the program. The high schools, you know, it's fun, but they have zero funding. So they need help with everything. And um, so the high school, they, they were in Orlando, Lyman High School in Orlando. That was easier to get to. Um, I had 10 kids that would show up once a week on Mondays for about an hour and 15 minutes right after school got out. So it was almost like a club. And they would come and we, I would bring, the, I bought them heat guns and, um, we got material donated from Ivy Roof Systems, and then my local ABC donated material uh, from Firestone, and we let them just practice. And I, you know, I told them we got to weld and practice, and then they eventually led to the competitors. The trade school was interesting because they wanted to compete. They saw the competition the previous year, and they they had a really good track record of competitions, and they said, "Hey, we've got some kids that we could do this." So they had already had uh, mock-ups built. Um, they would just needed a contractor to show up and come work with them. So, uh, you know, we jumped on that. And the great thing about trade schools is these are adult kids. You know, they're 18 and older. They're graduate. They're graduated from high school. So they're almost immediately able to hire. And, um, you know, I've told the story before that we had a project where we had to run some 106 long, foot long metal panels out on a military base. I needed people that I could get background check quick. And then bodies out there to help carry these panels. I called the instructor for the trade school, asked him if he had anybody that'd be interested. And in two days, I had 10 kids signed up. And by the next week, I had 10 of them on a job site, on a military job site, carrying, helping me run 106 foot long panels. And since then, we've hired three of them. So, wow. Um, you know, building that relationship, putting in that time, it makes it totally worth it. And, you know, Rick said earlier that. You know, the, a lot of these trades have a 65 year head start on us. But since we've jumped into this two years ago, we passed them up. When you come to the national competition, you see our our display that we set up that John built so well, um, that JM staff and, and, and sponsors is uh, the centerpiece of that entire uh, wing. And the kids put on the mock up. It's, a, it's an attention grabber and people are curious about it and we have teacher after teacher coming up to us wanting to know how they can get involved how they can get a student involved um so they can be a part of it um it's a really uh, it's a really impressive thing once you once you see it and it this a lot of time there's a lot of effort yeah a lot and this picture that you're seeing right now is the actual picture from the competition in atlanta that was in june so um we also have a picture of the teamworks and this is the steep slope that goes with the teamworks but one of the things um sherry you had talked about and i just like talk just a little bit more about advisory boards and how important that is to get involved to help get that in yeah um it's a it's a great place to start to get to know the uh, other players they're going to be other industries there represented um government agencies uh, school board members, and a uh, great way to connect. Again, hearing where the funding's coming from, seeing how roofing we can position roofing roofing to get some of those funds. Um, it's it's super important, and it's easy. They're they're always looking for people, and especially um, in industries where they need some help. So, you know, for Virginia Beach, where I live, it was a matter of filling out a form. I sat on another board with um, with the head of the CTE, so that did help. Um, but you know, we we have people on other boards throughout. Like my brother's on the city of Chesapeake. We've got another one of our guys on a different board, and it's really important because you know these guys, some of our guys came through those Votech schools, and it's it's important to see that that their legacy, especially the sheet metal guys, they're really they really want to be a part of things still to bring up that next gen. So. Definitely, if you can um, apply, see where see where there's some openings, and get on your your uh, CTE advisory boards. Yeah, um, John, you um, work with everyone all over the country on this. What are some of the success stories you've heard? Obviously, Tim and Sherry, but what are some of the success, success stories you've heard from contractors who have gotten involved with their schools advisory boards, getting with the tech classes? Some of those. 
Well, um, geez, let's see. I think at least uh, one of the ones that I like the most is on this call. Uh, I think I saw um, Jennifer George and uh, Laura Schweikert who help help us got, uh, help us get things going in Arizona. But um, at the very uh, genesis of this entire effort, we're trying to convince these Skills USA state directors that roofing was worth the floor space. And I can tell you that that was not as necessarily as easy as a sell as logic would suggest. Uh, we were told in a couple places, uh, Arizona and Florida being two of them, that they would never have a Skills USA contest there because roofing wasn't important. Um, and um, yeah, I know, as odd as it may seem, um, but, um, you know, Certainly, uh, you know, the work that Tim did to turn uh, an absolutely no way, never no into it was like, well, we're going to send competitors there in the secondary and post-secondary divisions uh, who are both going to compete and, you know, be right up in the cut for the win. Um, but uh, the team at ARCA, you know, kind of took an absolute no. And then we had the largest state contest in the country happen in Arizona last year. So there are stories like that happening all over the country where, you know, people are either bootstrapping it individually, like, you know, like Tim did or like Sherry did at the Genesis. And then there are a whole bunch of regional associations who are seeing the benefit that this potentially has to their membership and are, are bootstrapping. They are getting distributors on board. They're getting the material list in line. And then, you know, they're getting these things going. So, um, there are a lot of, there are 50 states in the United States and uh, 10 of them were represented last year for the first year. And it's curious to see where it's going to go next year. Yeah. Hey, Heidi, can I, yes. can I jump in for a second? Yes. So yeah, what John said, the growth of this is gonna be massive. So the teachers all see it and they want a piece of it from a national and then even on the state level. The thing that will slow this down is contractor participation. So the contractors have to get involved. They have to want to be, be a part of this. And if they do, go get involved with those schools because that's what's going to make this thing grow. So in Florida, like Florida is an example. I had five kids compete at the state competition, but there's only two different schools, right? So, but next year, I'm probably, we could probably have up to 10 different kids compete from 10 different schools. As long as we have contractors that will, are willing to go out and put in that time. And that's what will slow this down. If the contractors get on board, if workforce really is your issue, is an issue for you, this is a way to solve it. Uh, the kids are there. Go get involved and you will see this thing blow up and we will be by far the biggest uh, competition uh, at, besides maybe King Works, but we can yeah. compete with them uh, at, 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 on, on this level and have so many kids and teachers involved. It's just a matter of contractor participation at this point. Yeah. That is great. Well, and that leads us right into, um, you know, we're going to, you guys have been sharing your stories as we've gone along, but just real quick, Tim, can you uh, just talk a little bit about your two, um, participants and how they did? Yeah. So, um, like I, I said at the beginning, when I first saw this, my goal was I wanted to take kids, make them a national champion, and then they're going to want to come work for me. So I got to work with two schools this year, trade school and high school. Um, they, I had three kids from the trade school compete at the state level, two kids from the high school compete and they're from the each school and they compete against each other. Noemi won in the high school, um, and Matthew won a, in the trade school and brought them to nationals. And, uh, I, I was super proud of them. They, they put in the work, they, uh, week, the week before the competition, they showed up to my shop. We had mock up set up. They came and practiced. Um, Noemi absolutely crushed it. I, I want to see the final score sheet. I, I, I think there's a Russian <laughs> judge throwing it, at, throwing the, throwing the score sheet somewhere because I think she should have won. A little uh, controversy the there. Division. Matthew, he did great. Super proud of him. They, I mean, they they worked hard for it. Uh, they wanted it, and um, but you know, it, it just goes back with that relationship uh, of with the school and letting them know that they've got a chance and working with them and coaching them up. And then they come and it, it, it makes you proud to be there. Uh, Noemi's parents were there watching the whole yeah. world. Um, they, it was just super awesome to see them, uh, to see them participate there. And uh, yeah, they, they, they kicked butt. It was, it was cool. Florida is going to win it next year. <laughs> we'll, we'll win both of them next year. I'm, I'm pretty confident. 
Well, and if you want to see, if anybody out there wants to see the videos from those students, we they are on the Rupert's Coffee Shop YouTube channel. And we even got a video with Noemi's mom. So that was pretty cool too. So we are getting close in time, but Sherry, real quick about your um, participant. Um, well, this year uh, we had one that went to uh, nationals and um, he was supposed to come work for us and he, he worked one day. So lessons <laughs> learned, <laughs> um, you know, a mock-up is not the same as a roof. Mm -hmm. So expectations, we, we need to do a better job of, um, of letting guys know and gals know what it is going to entail when you show up to actually work and not, you're not on a platform on the ground. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, when, yeah. when we did the state competition, we had is indoor. One of the kids from the trade school came up and asked if we were going to have like fans there. So like, <laughs> Lord, we keep it cool. I said, no, we're going to take your ass outside in the sun. And so you were <laughs> there like real roofers. But uh, it was, and it's teacher, like he, he, he was one of the kids that came and volunteered with us out at the job site. And he did a great job. So he made it the whole day in, you know, 90 degree heat. Uh, out on a you know empty military base but it was just kind of it is kind of funny you do have to change <laughs> the expectations a little bit let them know no this is roofing it is hard um and i bring that up when i go meet with the schools i tell them hey this is roofing and 99 percent of you people that are watching this can't do it you're not tough enough you know i'll call out the toughness right away and say you won't be able to handle it you're not tough enough you can't do this and I think it, you know, for the competitive people, for the that will take that as a challenge, it's something that gets them a little bit more psyched up for it. Um, so, and now I've got kids at the trade school that I say, ah, you know, they're asking for jobs. I'm kind of, eh, we'll see. I don't, I don't know. I don't know if you're quite good enough. So before we we're like begging for anybody to come through the door, right? So, um, I love it. I love it. It definitely kind of changes the script a little bit. Um, well, I also want to point out um, Baker Roofing did have the winner, sorry, Tim, Brandon, and I talked to um, Ryan Clancy this morning, and, you know, they are looking at him possibly coming to work for them too, and so, and they've had other students come and work for Baker, so, and they just thumbs up, but I wanted to put these names because as you're watching this, these are the people who you can get a hold of. You can get a hold of them through John, um, he'll get the introductions, or through me, we'll get introductions, but if you want to talk to them about how they did it, what they did, they're all open there. Um, so it is for everyone in the roofing industry. And we've already said this, connect with your CTE school, your uh, manufacturers and distributors, ask them to donate, ask them to help you do this because they will. And then we want you to share your story with us at RCS so that we can continue to get people going back, going around and helping each other out. Um, one quick question. If there's any introduction or representation letter that recruiters can use when approaching vocational schools, are there, John? There is not yet. There is currently a toolkit, and I am currently parsing that toolkit out into a bunch of different groups. It's going to be something that's uh, available on NRCA's website, hopefully by the time uh, we get to fall meetings, certainly by the end of the year. But that's something that uh, we have we have a 30 page info dump document that anyone is welcome to. They're allowed to parse through it and kind of pick and choose what works best for them. Uh, but for an intro letter quite yet, um, you're happy, you're welcome to reach out to me and we'll draft one up together. And you saw where um, John, maybe you can drop your email into the chat just so if people want to grab that, they can. And um, I don't think we have any other questions, but if we are right at the top of the hour, I just want to say thank you everyone. Thank you, Jamie, John, Tim, Sherry, Rick. Um, such great information. And thank you for leading this effort that we need so much. So thank you. Can I do a quick plug, Heidi? Please. Uh, I have a podcast that's only about growing America's roofing workforce, and it is called Growing America's Roofing Workforce. I talk to a lot of the same people that Heidi does at RCS, but all we're talking about is this. Uh, have a look through the episode from last month was with uh, two of the winners right backstage from the award ceremony at Skills USA. Uh, check it out. If you have questions, let me know. Okay, and you can find that on the NRCA.net um, site also. Uh, I can't. Yeah. Wherever you get your podcast. Podcast. Just look it up. That is great. Well, thank you. Thank you, everybody. And thank you, John Smanville, for leading the way and for sponsoring this and really bringing this to everyone at the webinar. Um, 
We are at the top of the hour and I'm going to say thank you. And I'm um, just by the way, next week, we are going to have the same RLW, but it is going to be on the Clemson classes that were mentioned earlier. So if you want to find out how you can get your ongoing education and maybe a minor in roofing, um, you need to watch next week because we're going to have all of that. And we will have the folks from um, Clemson and from the Roofing Alliance talking about it. So we'll see you all next week. Have a great day.